Daily Broadside, day 598. Enjoying some uh, Grandma's Hard Candy. Well, I explained to you how yesterday I went and saw the Iron Claw. But first, I went to see Ferrari. Now, I rarely go to the movies. I probably go to the movies like a couple times a year. Uh, or you know, maybe once a year like and it's typically biopics I might have described this before but I like I like true you know things I don't like watching a bunch of Marvel history blah 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 adventures on crap so I wanted to see those two movies just as it were they came out the same way so I go to see I got go online and I don't know why movie theater websites are the most convoluted websites like you can't just go to a local theater and see what time or something you got to go through all these screens and long story short i get there i had two tickets for ferrari i show up and the girl taking my ticket thing who had um a little scanner she's like i pull out my phone i show her the email she scans it she's like have you already seen this and i'm like that's an odd question to ask i was like no I was like, uh, I just got here. I literally just pulled up. She's like, oh. And then she's like, oh, this is for a different theater. And I'm like, mother, you know, and I'm a little mad, right? Because now I've gone and gotten tickets for the wrong theater. And it's like starting in 10 minutes, right? No chance I'm getting to that other theater, right? And so I was like, well, that's great. What are the odds they'd be the same time? Anyway, I didn't say, uh, She's like, you can get them refunded. And I'm like, all right, cool. That's fine. I said, well, give me two for that one. So I get in line, right? And i like, can I get two for Ferrari? And she's like, uh, we're not showing that. And I'm like, so I see the Iron Claw because I'd plan on seeing them both, right? So I was like, all right, Iron Claw it is. So I got to see the Iron Claw. Now, the Iron Claw is a beautiful story. It's a great story. I mean, it's sad, but it's a great story. You know, great, not as in good, as in rah, rah, what a great story but a great tale to tell, right? But the movie tries too hard to be a great movie, okay? It was a good movie. However, it kind of makes me mad that they left out one of the five, five of the six brothers are dead, spoiler alert, and they left out Chris, who's not even in the movie, who killed himself, like, I think he was the second of the five, I can't see anything. It's like, it's like I'm driving on the sun. And, uh, and so, uh, they left out a complete brother. Now, it's already a two-hour and 15-minute movie. So, the guy, the director guy who wrote the movie is like, it would have dragged on too far. I'm like, I think this would have been a better, like, Netflix four-part series or something, you know? Like, let them, let them do their due diligence or, and, and tell the story the way it was, right? Nevertheless, very sad story. Uh, you'll learn to hate Fritz um, and all that. And I only know the Von Erichs because I knew there were a bunch of them, but... I grew up watching the NWA wrestling for like my middle school years for about three or four years. And I remember Carrie Von Eric. I don't really remember much of seeing the other ones because they were, you know, indifferent, whatever. But uh, it's an interesting story. Well, the problem that bothers me is, first of all, the height difference, okay? That shameless guy, uh, you know, whatever his name is, Michael Clark Duncan, I don't know what that kid's name is, that dude that was uh, Liam and, uh, not Liam, was he was. Uh, I can't remember his name. Anyway, the guy from Shameless. He's like 5'4". And he, they, all these dudes are 6'2", 6'3", 6'8". You know, this is their build height. But nevertheless, they're big guys, right? Except the one guy, Chris, who was like somehow 5'5". Five, because five, their dad's like 6'4". I guess the mom, Dottie, was kind of short. But anyway, um, I, I didn't like the, the height thing. Because Zach Efron, I think he's like 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, I don't even think he's a big dude. But anyway, uh, that, that said... I guess they didn't put Chris in there because they couldn't find a guy shorter than the shameless guy. But it's definitely a good movie. It's just not as great as perhaps it could have been. But this is like this dude's like third film, you know? So, I mean, he's he's working on it. He's getting there. But it's definitely worth seeing. But it is remarkable because on top of that, there's also like a couple fake Von Erics, like Lance, Mark, and Rip. I don't think they were actually Von Erics. They were just give it I, there was a waldo von eric i think that was the brother of fritz like it's crazy there's like, there's like 74 different uh you know um von erics out there and they they all like centered around the dallas sportatorium which is a stupid word but the dallas sportatorium was built in like 35 and in the 50s it became a really popular wrestling venue and then it went into disarray and 
you know, just fell on hard times and everything. Closed finally in 98. They raised it in 03 and that didn't exist. But one of the things that I read about it was, one of the things that kind of, the last hurrah that they had on there was like, uh, I can't remember the name of the, the, the airline, but one of the CEOs of an airline had a an arm wrestling match at the Dallas Sportatorium in 1992 with another CEO, billionaire, whatever, of another competing uh, airline. And this is the last big thing that they hosted at this, you know, auditorium or whatever. And I thought to myself, you know, I don't know where we've come in this country, but we at some point got to, you know, we established this country in the 1700s and, you know, 200 years later plus, we got CEO billionaires of uh, competing airlines going into the Dallas Sportatorium and seeing who can arm wrestle who better. Like, that's just that's just crazy talk right there, you know? But nevertheless, it's not a bad movie at all. Um, and it didn't even seem like two hours and 15 minutes. Uh, even though it cost me like $74 to see it because I had to buy a ticket to Ferrari. I'm gonna get this, I try to, I'm sitting in my seat. I got two minutes before because it says refunds are good until uh, the, the actual time of the show, right? So it's like 3.43 and I'm typing furiously trying to get the dumb email as soon as I submit it because you're in like this movie theater with not great internet reception. And it says, oh, you've already elapsed time. So now I've got to go like, if I even care to fight my credit card company, not fight my credit card company, get my credit card to fight for me and be like, hey, this is a stupid policy. But anyway, I digress. Uh, I went to a white elephant one time uh, when I was a kid. No, when I was a kid. I don't know why I just said that. When I was younger, which, you know, I was closer to being a kid back then because I was younger. But at any rate, I go to this white elephant event uh, with some work people. And uh, I didn't want to do this. I just wanted to get together and not have the white elephant. But everybody insisted. So I was like, all right, I got your white elephant. Well, I had recently learned of a friend who had had a litter of kittens. And so I went and procured one of these kittens and wrapped it up in a loosely tied box. And I gave a cat, a baby cat, a kitten as they call it, as a white elephant gift. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, we haven't had a white elephant since then that I was invited to because they've still got that cat to this day. Now granted, it's an outside cat and it just scurries away the, the small woodland creatures like mice and chipmunks and gophers and whatnot things that cats keep at bay but uh they still have that cat his name is henry and i gave that cat to them for the ele white elephant gift and uh, i just thought that was the greatest white elephant gift that could be given and uh lastly i'll leave you with have you ever like hung out with yourself for like a day and not interacted with anybody like you wake up nobody's at your house nobody's called you you haven't called anybody you're just living the world on your own right you're just walking through earth doing all your stuff and it gets to be about five or six o'clock like it is right now and you realize you're thinking to yourself and you're like i haven't spoken like since last night like it's since like seven o'clock at night i haven't said a word right i've just been silent all day long because it's just been me and uh well you know why would i talk to myself on the regular you know sometimes you do talk to yourself sometimes you don't and so to make sure that you still have a voice do you ever say to yourself, like outside, you go like something like, you're like, hello, ha <laughs> ha, and you clear your throat or something. Just make some kind of audible word or noise or motion such that you know that you still have vocal capabilities. Maybe it's just me, I don't know. Y'all have a great day. I look like I'm riding straight into the sun because I am, hey, get it.